grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Merry Christmas. I'm Pastor Julia Crone, one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this Christmas Eve service here at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. It's our hope and prayer that this will be a meaningful time of worship for you and your families as you celebrate the entrance of Jesus Christ into the world. There's a few ways that we would love to invite you to participate in this service that are gonna require some supplies. So if you want to, go ahead and take a moment and pause and gather these items. We will be celebrating Holy Communion together. So we invite you to get some sort of liquid or drink, some sort of juice, and some sort of bread or cracker or cookie, anything, so that we can share together in Holy Communion. And finally, we will end our service with, by candlelight. And so we invite you to gather some sort of candle or lighter or even a flashlight or your cell phone to participate with us. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in the greeting that will be found on your screen. To us, watchful and waiting, a gift has been slipped into our midst. A gift of peace to troubled souls. A gift of joy to sad hearts. A tiny child, gift of God. Open your hearts, raise your songs. Give thanks to the giver, welcome the gift.
This evening I'll be reading from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is a light no darkness can extinguish. Through long ages of the past, prophets have foretold his coming. Through long ages of the past, now the time has come at last. Oh, how lovely, oh, how pure is this perfect child of heaven. Oh, how lovely, oh, how pure, gracious gift to humankind. Jesus, Lord of all the world, coming as a child among us. Jesus, Lord of all the world, grant to us thy heavenly peace. Will you join me now in going before God in prayer? Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you bring us such good news at Christmas. Your gifts are many and full of wonder. Mercy, reconciliation from sin, light and life, healing, peace. You are so pleased with us as daughters and sons that you come to us in a manger in the little town of Bethlehem and shine in our dark streets with everlasting light. You've taken flesh upon yourself, become one with us, one of us, that we may be one with you. Surprising and gracious God, we are pleased to dwell with you too. Thank you for being our God and for choosing us as your people. Make us beacons of your justice and defenders of those for whom there is no room, the homeless and hungry, the unemployed and uninsured, the imprisoned and the victims of prejudice and persecution. We pray for all those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, and we name them before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. Let there be joy in our world today. Joy that you have come to us again. Joy that all nations may rise and join the triumph of the skies. Joy that we know you and are found in you through Jesus our Emmanuel. And now help us to mean what we say as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're so grateful that you are worshiping with us here tonight. And we also would love to give you a little preview of what is to come in 2022 in the life of our church. In the year 2022, we will be remembering that church is more than just what happens on Sunday mornings. Our first sermon series of the year is going to be called, Can I Ask That? We are going to be asking questions in our sermons and hopefully providing some answers to questions like, does God love everyone? Or why doesn't the church talk about current events? These are questions that we asked people to, to say, you know, what are the questions that you have for the church? And we hope this will be a fruitful time for us. We're also going to have in 2022, a focus on mental health. This has been an incredibly difficult couple of years between political divisions and the pandemic and just the daily strains of daily life. And so we want to take time to truly consider what our faith has to say about mental health care. We're going to be having monthly special events featuring speakers who are experts in their field. We'd love your input on what topics we're going to cover. And so you will find in your e-blast a link to a survey that you can fill out to tell us what topics are the most important to you. So please do go ahead, fill out that survey, and start looking for more information about this upcoming series. Finally, as we transition into a time of offering, I'd like to let you know that the theme for our Christmas offering this year is Unto Us a Child is Born. A portion of tonight's offerings will be given to the Methodist Home for Children and to Mission of Hope Rotafunk all organizations that work with the well-being of children. Now we're going to go into a time of reflection on God's gifts. And I ask you to reflect based on all of this information on how God might be calling you to give and also what God might be calling you to in the new year, what ways you are being called to go deeper in your spiritual journey. As we turn now to this time, would you please join me in prayer? Father God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you that you have given us every good thing, that you are loving and trustworthy. We acknowledge that everything we have is a gift from you. Our money, our time, our talents, and so in gratitude, we joyfully return to you what is already yours in union with Christ's offering for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet While shepherds watch your keeping This, this is Christ the King Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him, Lord The babe, the son of Mary Why lies he in such mean a state Where ox and ass are feeding Good Christians fear for sinners here The silent word is pleading This, this is Christ the King Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Taste, taste to bring him, Lord, the 
babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings, salvation rings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. tells of the birth of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that's taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Most holy and loving Lord, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to us, to be with us. Lord, may we always, always be grateful and sing his praise. In his name we pray. Amen. A pastor was once preaching on Christmas Eve, and his sermon went on rather long. His thoughts were scattered, he rambled, it was difficult to follow. And when he was greeting people after the service, one parishioner surprised him when she commented, Pastor, your sermon tonight reminded me of God's peace and love. The pastor was flattered. Really? How so, he asked. Well, it reminded me of God's peace in the way that it surpassed all understanding. And it reminded me of God's love because it seemed to endure forever. I'd like to share with you some thoughts tonight, and while I'm all about God's peace and love, I do hope to avoid both of those pitfalls as I speak. So here we go. There's a story about an old Jewish man who would get up at the break of dawn and go to the Western Wall in in Jerusalem, also known as the Wailing Wall, and he would pray fervently from morning till evening. One day, a journalist from the London Times who'd observed him do this day after day after day asked him, You come every day to this wall. How long have you done this? What are you praying for? The old man replied, I've come here to pray every day for 50 years. I pray for peace and reconciliation among the people of this land who are so divided by hate and conflict. The journalist was amazed. How does it make you feel to come here every day for 50 years and pray for these things when so much conflict still exists? The old man looked at her sadly like I'm talking to a wall. Every year around this time, we hear scripture passages and seeing beloved Christmas carols about peace on earth and goodwill toward others. We light candles and we sing silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. And it's beautiful, perhaps even nostalgic for many of us. But does it really make any difference? You look at the world around us and you see all the unrest, the pain, the hurt, the brokenness, and you wonder, is peace really possible? Or you look at our nation still feeling the aftershocks of one of the most contentious election cycles in U.S. history. You've seen the deep divisions across this country between the masked and the unmasked, the vaxxed and the unvaxxed, the star-bellied snitches and those who have none, if you like Dr. Seuss, and you're experiencing these conflicts in your own families or in your workplace or your neighborhood, and you say to yourself, I can't believe they think that way. And you wonder, is peace really possible? Of course, we don't have to look far to see the signs of pain and brokenness. We look within ourselves And we find the restlessness in our own hearts, the divisions within. We feel the ache, the longing for something more, for our lives to be well and whole. Is peace really possible? We can pray for peace within ourselves, our relationships, our nation, and our world. We can yearn for it. But after a while, you do wonder if you're just talking to a wall. Is anyone really listening? Or as one peace advocate put it, it can feel like you're banging your head against a wall, and if you're lucky, you might make a tiny crack. The walls that divide us are so thick and so, so strong. 
The world is not the way it's supposed to be. Of course, you didn't need me to tell you that. You knew that already. And most of our lives are not the way they're supposed to be either. And yet, God has something else in mind. In fact, it was on his mind in the very beginning when he went about creating the world and everything in it. A vision for shalom. That's the word. It's Hebrew. And it gets translated as peace, but it means so much more than just that word. So much. It means wholeness. It means flourishing. It means the interconnectedness of all things, the way things are supposed to be. It means a right relationship with God, a right relationship with others, a right relationship with all creation. Sin made a mess of things. It disrupted the shalom, fractured the relationships. So up went the walls. Walls all around us, walls between us, Walls within us. We put up these walls because we think they will protect us. But God refuses to leave the world a mess. He refuses to leave the world fractured and broken. God refuses to have a world with so many walls, so many divisions. So what does God do? God enters into the mess into the darkness, into the brokenness. God came to be with us among all the walls, and He walks right through them. God calls a people to be His covenant people, a light to the nations. Now, sometimes they live into this calling, and sometimes they don't. But God's intent is to put the world back together, to break down the walls, to restore the shalom, to bring peace. God even sent his prophet Isaiah to tell everybody about it. He talks about a child who will be a light into the darkness, a Messiah, a Savior who is Christ the Lord, who will come to draw the world back together, who will draw people back to God, who will usher in God's shalom, who will usher in God's peace for all people, for all the nations, including our own. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. For unto us a child is born. He has a face. It's that scrunched up, cute little ruddy face of an infant. So helpless, so vulnerable, born into straw and poverty to an unwed teenage mom and her bewildered fiancé. Bringing in another kingdom. The one that Isaiah speaks of in the line of David, Israel's greatest king. A kingdom of peace where righteousness and justice meet. Shalom. A peace that is not just the absence of conflict, but rather is the presence of something. Like justice and beauty. Goodness and wholeness. God's very spirit. A peace in which the walls come crumbling down. And we can finally be at peace with God forgiven and put back into a right relationship with Him. And we can experience peace even with each other, overcoming our divisions and moving toward one another in love and understanding. The nations can beat their weapons into plowshares and stop warring against each other, instead joining together in mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. This child brings this peace. This child makes this peace which seems so impossible, possible. The Swiss theologian Karl Barth called this the impossible possibility. A God who is able to do what we, in our own striving and effort, cannot do. This child who grew up into a man, fully God and fully human, and who would lay down his life in a sacrifice of love, only to burst forth from the tomb three days later and be crowned Lord of all the impossible possibility. And now, the world really can be different. The Apostle Paul declares it this way in Ephesians, But now in Christ Jesus, you who are far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For He is our peace, and His flesh He has made both groups into one, broken down the dividing walls, that is the hostility between us. He has come to create one new humanity, thus making peace, breaking down the hostility between us over masks, over
over politics, over old grudges, whatever. No wonder the angels sang out on that first Christmas day, glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, yes, it really is possible, peace among those whom he favors. In the movie Joyu Noel from 2005, it tells the true story of the famous Christmas Eve truce of 1914 that took place during World War I. Now, I've mentioned this in previous sermons, but I think it's worth sharing again on this most blessed and holy night. Kaiser Wilhelm II had sent thousands of Christmas trees to the front lines in order to boost the morale of the German troops. After the trees were set up over the trenches inside of the enemy's lines, a German soldier began to sing the beloved Christmas hymn, Still a Nacht, or Silent Night. His strong tenor voice pierces the cold, wintry night as enemy armies sit in their trenches gripping their rifles. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep heavenly peace. Soon the French and the Scottish troops huddled in their own separate barracks begin to sing along in their own languages. And then something truly remarkable happens. Slowly, soldiers from all sides begin to climb out of the trenches without their weapons. Instead, they engage each other in conversation, start exchanging gifts, and then participate in Christmas Eve mass together. In the movie, a fictional character is added a world-class soprano to sing along with the great tenor. It's the beauty of their singing and the beauty of the gospel that makes up the content of their song. And it breaks through the political dividing walls of hostility, and it unites these sworn enemies in joy and tears. So tonight we sing, Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace! Hail the Son of Righteousness! Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. And we sing, no more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. And finally, silent night, holy night, son of God, love's pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. His grace has redeemed us. May we be at peace with God, with ourselves, with our families, and with everyone around us. As Jesus himself said, blessed are the peacemakers they will be sons and daughters of God. Us. Let it begin within our own hearts. For what is impossible for us is now made possible with God. For Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, give us courage to bear witness to the impossible possibility of a different kind of world, to a way of peace that is not only how the world can be, but how it shall be. When Christ returns and the glory of the Lord floods the entire earth, come, Lord Jesus, be our peace. We've come now to the point in our service where we have the joy of sharing together in Holy Communion. If you haven't had a moment yet, go ahead and pause this video and go to your kitchen and collect some sort of juice and some sort of bread so that we can all share in Holy Communion together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful Merciful God, 
we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here, wherever we may be. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread that we share around the world is the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup in which we share, no matter where you are, is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Tonight, as a reminder that Christ is the light of the world, I invite you to light a candle in the midst of the darkness. Now join with me in singing our traditional hymn, Silent Night.
peace of Christ be with you. For Christ our Savior is born. Go in peace.